Okay, so we're going to finish up um, our study of circles and ellipses today with objective 1.2D. So today we're going to be finding key information about ellipses from equations and graphs, and graph ellipses, and we're also going to write standard form equation of ellipse, I should say ellipses, given key information. And our topic today is um, ellipses or ellipses with a center at HK. So it's shifted off the origin. So let's take a look. We have the same vocabulary as yesterday, ellipse, foci, major axis, minor axis, vertices, and co-vertices. So let's look at the standard equation of an ellipse with a center at HK. So we'll start with the major axis horizontal that looks like this. X minus H quantity squared because it's the major axis is horizontal, we're gonna put the a squared under the x squared plus the y minus k squared over the b squared because it's going to have the minor axis under the, y, as under the y squared equals one. So our center will be at h k. Our vertices, which will be on our um, major axis, will be at H minus A, K, push, push left A, and then H plus A, K. So let's just go down here and put, like for example, we're just going to put an H, K right here. So this is going to be our H, K. Here's our center, okay? And let's say that we're gonna have a major axis that goes this way, A units. So th this point would be right here. This would be H plus A, K. And if we go back that distance, A, then this point here would be at H minus A, K. Let me make sure I got that centered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, though that's centered. We got to make sure that your, you know, your um, center is always in the middle of your major axis. So you might have to use your midpoint formula by your, the way. Okay, let's do our co-vertices. So our co-vertices are going to be on your minor axis. So they're going to be up. B units and down B units. So we'll put a point there. And let's see, let's put a point here. So this would be at the point H, K plus B, because we're going to go up from your K value. And this will be H, K minus B. Okay. And so this would be. Our ellipse would look something like this. Okay. All right. So um, there's our ellipse, our foci. So, oh, let's get our covertices written up here. Got a little off track, out of order. HK minus B, and then H. K plus B, okay? So our foci, remember that's your C term, and, and we learned to find C yesterday. C squared equals A squared minus B squared, so you'll do the same thing. We won't be really working with foci so much today, but I still want to give you this information. So remember, foci is on your major axis, and it backs up and goes forward on your major axis, so we'll just put it there. <clears throat> okay, and so that would be C this way and C that way. So this would be the point H minus C, K on the left, and this would be the point H plus C, a K on the right. And I do want to do a couple other things. I want to mention that this is going to be the left vertex, and this is going to be the right vertex, okay? 
and then up here we're going to call this the upper covertex and we're going to call this point here the lower covertex because remember the covertices are on the minor axis and the vertices are on the major axis okay so there's that now we'll switch everything around here and we'll go to major axis vertical so you know that just means that our a well let me remind you a has to be greater than b okay greater than zero for both these situations so we'll have x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals one right so if we put say a point in hk we'll put one here okay so we're going to put an hk here somewhere just some random point okay so not on the origin all right so hk and we have a major axis that's vertical so we'll be going up a so we'll just go up one two three i don't know a bit let's see how that is one two three four five six seven all right so i need to go down seven one two three four five six seven okay so that's going to be a and a so that point up here in your upper vertex is going to be at h k plus a and down here at the bottom it's going to be at h k minus a and that'll be your lower vertex and then your b term or your b which tells us our minor axis here we'll just go for that way and for this way for this uh, point today so this will be b and b so this point would be at h plus b k and this one would be at h minus b k okay so i've kind of forgot to fill out the information at the top so we'll go back and do that here in just a second after i get this drawn so there's our ellipse go and our foci we'll do that in in blue remember foci is on the um, major axis so that would be up C and this would be down C <clears throat> and so this point excuse me would be at h k plus c and this point here would be at h k minus c all right and so those would be our foci and i'm going to go back and grab my pen just to mention that this is going to be the left covertex and this is going to be the right covertex I'm just going to come back here and do my covertices will be at h minus bk and h plus bk and my vertices will be at h k minus a and h k plus a and my foci will be at h k minus c and h k plus c okay and then again remember that your major axis is equal to two times your a and your minor axis is going to be two times your b that's helpful when you're graphing things all right, so that's our information. Now we're basically just doing the same thing we did yesterday. Um, we're just shifting the graph, the center, left or right and up and down. So shifting our center for HK. So here we have example one, it says graph the ellipse. So first, let's look at this equation. Maybe we would rewrite it like this. X minus two quantity squared over 25 
plus, I'm going to put a 1 under that, y minus 0 quantity squared, that still equals y squared, over 1 equals 1. And then I'm going to determine that the major axis is going to be horizontal because the larger value is under my x squared, right? And so my a, so this would be x minus h quantity squared over a squared plus y minus k quantity squared over b squared equals 1. Right, and so let's identify our HK here. So our center is our HK, so our center would be at 2, 0. So we'll go graph that at 2, 0, right there. And our A term, our A tells us how long, to, how far to go left or right from our center. So if A squared equals 25, We'll take the square root of both sides of that. So a squared square root, a squared plus minus square root of 25. So that is a equals plus and minus five. So that means we're gonna go left and right five from our center. So I think I'll grab my red pen here and go one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could ask you what's, what are the vertices? And what's the left vertex, what's the right vertex, and you could probably tell me. But we're good there for that, because we're just graphing here. Let's find our, our um, co-vertices here. So b squared equals 1. So I think you can see that as b is just plus or minus 1. So that means on our vertical minor axis, we're just going up 1 and we're going down 1. So that's a pretty flat um, ellipse here, so let's see if I can graph it. Okay. Oops. It's so little it's hard to manage. I'm going to make it bigger so I can get it straight here. Okay. Hopefully you guys aren't wasting your time watching me do this. Come on, cooperate. There we go, good enough. And at this point, I could certainly find my coordinates for my vertices and my co-vertices. That would be useful for like the next question. But you were just asked to graph the ellipse, and so there it is. That's number one. Okay, number two asks you to find the standard equation of the graph. Well, let's take a look at this. This definitely has a vertical, a major, um, vertical major axis, right? So that would be from here to here. And then it uh, has a um, horizontal minor axis. So that would be from here to here. And you can pretty much see that, all right? Um, let's put a point up here. Here we have the point negative four, six. And down here, here we have the point uh, negative four, negative four. And so we would want to be in the midpoint of that to find our center. So if we were using midpoint formula to find our center, right, we would be going, adding our x's, so negative four plus negative four cut in half, and then adding our y y's there, so that would be six plus negative four cut in half. And we would do a little math there. So that would be negative 8 cut in half, which is negative 4. And 6 plus negative 4 is 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so you can see that I actually did find my hk there at um, negative 4, 1. So that's my hk center. So I need that. I need the center. And then I also need my a and b. Well, we can see the a and b here. We're just going to your A, here's your A, right? And here's your A and here's your B, here's your B. So your A is five, you can see that. It's just the distance, the vertical distance. It's up from one to six and it's down from one to negative four. So A equals five. And then your B, it's just, you can see it here and here, it's three, right? Because remember A has to be greater than B 
and they both have to be positive. They have to be greater than zero. So we would choose because we have a vertical major axis. That means that the a squared goes under the y. So we would choose x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. And then we would just plug in our h, k, and our a, and our b. So let's do that. So we would get x minus our h, negative 4 squared, over our b squared, which would be 3 squared, plus our y minus k, so that would be, sorry, yeah, y minus k, yes, squared, over our a squared, which would be 5 squared equals 1. And I think we just need to simplify that. So final answer, x plus 4 quantity squared over 9 plus y minus 1 squared over 25 equals 1. And then something you could do just to double check your work is to just type in your equation that you wrote in Desmos or your graph, yeah, Desmos, and see if it matches the graph we just looked at. Okay, so there's that. Uh, example two. So I give you a graph, you write the equation. Okay, just using a little logic there. All right, so next question says find the center vertices and co vertices of the given ellipse. And I'd actually wish that I didn't put this graph here. I think I'll remove it for purposes of what you guys are going to do. So I'm not going to use this graph. So here's what I know he, that this has a major axis that's vertical because this will be my a squared and this will be my b squared. And there's my h and my k, right? And so here's what I know. I have a center at negative 2, 1. So I'm just going to put a center here at negative 2, 1. All right? And let's see, I have an A that equals plus or minus 4 because my A squared equals 16. So my A is plus or minus 4. Take the square root of that. Since it's on my major axis is vertical, I'm going to be going up 4 and down 4, right? So up 4 and down 4. So that's going to happen, actually, let me rewrite that. That would be taking my y coordinate, because the y coordinate's what's changing, because I'm going up 4. So that would take me to the point negative 2, and 1 plus 4 is 5. So now I'm up at 2, negative 2, 5. And then if I go down 4, and I'm down here, I would be at negative 2, and then 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So this would be my upper vertex, and this would be my lower vertex. Okay, And then, um, I, let's find our B term. So our B term is going to be on our minor axis, right? So if B squared equals 9, then B equals plus or minus 3. So on our minor axis, we're going back 3 and we're going forward 3, right? So we're just take, going from negative 2 on our x, and we're going back 3. So negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So starting at negative 2, we go back negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, right? So we're back at negative 5, 1. And then if we're going forward 3, we would be going negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. And we would be here at 1, 1. And this would be our left covertice, and this would be our right covertice. <clears throat> so I was just using a little logic there. Um, you could, of course, go ahead and graph and use a graph to do that because that one's not very difficult to graph. So you could graph at negative 2, 1, negative 2, 1, and then just using your A, go up four and down four, so one, two, three, four. Get your coordinate down, one, two, three, four. Get your coordinate for your upper and lower vertex. And then you use your B term, which is three, right? Um, so that would be on your minor axis, so off your center, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And you could get your center 
your vertices and your co-vertices on a graph as well. But I will tell you that sometimes on your homework today, what's going to happen is these values might be really big, like negative 17 or 21, or you, this might be like 169, really big values. So you'd have to draw a really big graph for that. So that's why I kind of like using this little diagram here just to walk myself through that information. So what I'm going to do is write my center. My center is at HK, so my center was at negative two, one. My um, lower vertices, my lower vertex was at negative two, negative three. My upper, upper vertex was at negative two, five. Um, and then my left co-vertices, co-vertex is at negative five, one, and my right co-vertex was at one, one. Okay, and so there's a couple of options there for helping you to um, find that information. You could also use formulas if you want to because we do have these formulas up here and you could go back and, and reference those if you'd rather. It's perfectly fine to just reference your formulas and use those. I, it doesn't matter to me. I just want you to be able to, to know what to do and logic your way to the answer. Okay, last one here and then we're done. Okay, it says use the information to write the standard form equation of the ellipse. So I've given you vertices at four nine and four negative 11. And co-vertices at seven negative one and one negative one. So let's kind of graph those. That might be useful. So that might help us do a little bit. So four nine and four negative 11, which would be right there. So that, and that's definitely your major axis because your major axis has got the vertices Right, so that's your major axis, and your minor axis gets the co-vertices. So let's see, our minor axis, negative seven, or sorry, sorry, seven, negative one, and then one, negative one. So you can see the center right there because the center has to be dead center between those. Right, so it's gotta be the midpoint so one way to go about that is to just kind of graph the ellipse. So that's why I gave you a graph so that if that's the way you want to logic your way to the solution, then that's what you can do, okay? The other way you could do it is just find the midpoint between your vertices because that'll give you the center point. So if we do midpoint, you just add your x's, so four plus four, cut it in half. Add your y's, nine plus negative 11, cut it in half, and we'll simplify here. So that's eight over two, or four, and this is negative two over two, or negative one. And so you can see that we do have a center here at four, negative one. So there's our hk, right? There's our hk, that's useful. And then what we want to do is find um, your a, so your a is going to be this value here. So we could just take this point here, which is at four nine, and we could find the distance between negative one and nine. And that would be a distance of 10. So in this case, we could see that A equals 10. And then B is really easy to see here because it's just the distance from the center to the endpoint of your minor axis. So that's one, two, three. So B equals three. Now, of course, you could also use um, formulas to find that. You could find your distance between your um, four, nine, right? You have a distance that's a vertex. So that's the upper vertex and the center, okay? Which is your HK. So you could use the distance formula to find the length of that, if you want to, you could go distance is equal to your x sub one minus your x sub two squared plus your y sub one minus your y sub two squared, change, change, that's zero squared. So zero squared plus 
10 squared, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. And so you could see that A is 10 here and here. It's up to you how you want to do it. And you could do the same thing. You could use the distance formula between, say, um, 7, negative 1, and your center point as well and find your B that way. But here's what we have. We have an HK at 4, negative 1, an A at 10, and a B at 3. So we want to put it in the equation that has a major, a vertical major axis. So that would be, I'm going to write it down here, x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. And then we would just plug in our values. So that would be x minus 4 squared over 3 squared plus y minus negative 1 squared over a squared equals 1 and then we'll clean that up so x minus 4 quantity squared over 9 plus y plus 1 quantity squared over 100 equals 1 and so there is your solution to that so hopefully um, you have a good plan for how you're going to identify your A and B and your H and K, whether you're using formulas or you're using a graph to help you determine that information. It really doesn't matter. Okay, and so you have an assignment, 1.2D. Um, it's on Canvas, and it'll be very, very similar to the four types of problems we did in your notes. Okay, have a great day.